is going to come up with and let's see if MYS continue along with the strong showing and take it out or if Lamac and Curry can ride that momentum. They've been powering through the, the loser's bracket since they've been there straight back into the grand final picture. Uh, let's see if they can look to build on the, the wins that they've been having. Yeah, no, it's it's going to be good to see because as you said, they are the only team for the second week running now to have taken a game off mys so the chance is there you know they know they can take a game off they just need to make take two games off to be able to uh win this and you know what they're gonna keep coming back they're they're definitely improving they're learning each other's styles they're just it's such a mind game between these two teams and they fought tooth and nail here so we are going to see if team mys will hold on to their first position or will finally uh team lamak and curry find a chink in the armor because that's really all they need to just find that little chink to be able to break through and take uh not one but two games off so now we can see at the start there is a mute and Crustle ban that's a respect one uh to rebongs and nightmare foxy and in turn we do see the double evolutions banned again now we look through here you can see yimu like avro I, I know gyarados is a definite favorite of yours lately yes i think it's a very strong uh character as well we see them picking up first and as i mentioned earlier in the broadcast we've seen lots of teams look to ban the gyarados just because of how imposing it's a mid-game monster for sure once it gets that evolution from Magikarp, it dominates that mid-game. So uh, it'd be very interesting to see if the Gyarados can get its evolution nice and early and look to steamroll through uh, Lamak and Curry, or if Lamak and Curry are going to be able to sort of shut it down, keep it a Magikarp for a while, uh, and yeah. be able to sort of not let it take control. Yeah, and you know what? I haven't really seen uh, Nightmare Foxy on Sylveon as much, so that's a very interesting pick. Just because I'm, I'm for myself personally, I know that Nightmare Foxy is known to be more of like kind of the, the the resident sniper, so to speak, right? So this is something that's uh, you don't see very often. So I'm very interested to see how this plays out. But to MYS standards, they have opted not to go for a support as Yang picks up the Lucario and Blaziken from H. T. Now, what's interesting that we see here, Abro, is Yang does have that fluffy tail. So, uh, very, very strategic conditions here from MYS's side. Whereas uh, Lamak and Kari is a more standard approach. They've got a, almost a jack of, actually, not almost, they do have a jack of every role here. Yes, very balanced team composition there from Lamak and Kari. But as we've seen with MYS, with Yang particularly, they tend to roam around and do their own thing and create lots of score pressure. Uh, to give MYS a really strong lead moving into the final stretch. So with that fluffy tail, it's simply going to give Lucario the ability to farm really quickly, uh, gather lots of points and be able to score as much as possible. But it will be interesting to see how MYS do play this. They do have three all-rounders, um, so they're going to be running it down. Um, you know, they've, they've got not much range on their team, so it looks like they're going to be all-in. Or if they can get that uh, you know, lead that they've been getting for most of their games, they've got a very strong defensive front to be able to... Yeah control the, the middle of the map yeah i think i think actually mys is looking at more of an objective base kind of strategy here because they've got like the secures uh they look like they with fluffy tail is kind of in a way it's like a giveaway right of what they're wanting to do they want to take objective down quick and and use it as the sixth member for their team if they are going through that route uh but we can see here that lucara is going to start off something maybe yang will be doing something to, yeah evade with the fluffy tail we'll wait and see as yimu gets kind of like a free gauge experience farm there for the magic cup so uh interestingly enough torchic will be their central laner and yang going to cause some havoc at the start starting with the blue now mimikyu is very strong i will say that lamak and curry has a nice team great protection there from lamak and curry yang in a lot of trouble that fluffy tail isn't going to help him and they do get get another one for their uh for their reward so this is this is great what we see from lamak and curry yes and they've definitely been paying attention to mys and what they've been doing in previous games they had the hoopers stick with that mimic not just for the first buff but stick with them for that whole time and we now see that they've got three in the bottom path i uh, probably was communication that magic Carp was running solo up top as uh, so they didn't <laughs> many resources there uh, but look you know what after a minute if you see your effort gauge at that 
far up, I'd be pretty happy with myself there or, or for the team to know that he's going to evolve soon. So that's good indication there. You can see, though, that it's almost a four versus four coming up. Even Espion coming in to help. You can see Bocci going in for the attack. There goes the, the warp portal. And Magikarp oh, right. unfortunately Psy goes down. Jalion with a very nice Psyshock. Yes, not sword power, but uh, Psyshock on that Magikarp. So that will delay him a little bit more. Fortunately, Yang gets that little bow toy there from the side. So Jalion has to go back down to the bottom pad as the two defenders go at it. But as you can see here, Trevenant up, ready to go. K2, still a Squirtle. And, and you can see that all it's it's almost like a mirror image in terms of they they know each other's movements they're just trying to cover each other's bases and and we can see that hooper may be getting a little bit uh, stuck here but ak nice uh nice job on getting a little bit of a secure might not be able to get out though as gyarados is you know you've said is such a monster once yeah evolved. we we even see that there it's you know level four had a two level disadvantage but still is able to come out on top uh, and that has given it a lot of XP. So essentially back in the game top lane, it's almost as if Magikarp was never there. Um, and we yeah. see here as well Sylveon coming up to provide some further Ooh. support. They're going to be able to get that KO on the enemy team's jungler, uh, which is really big there. Lots of levels for the Blazer Cannon is going to be running around with a couple of buffs now for a little while as well. Yeah, look, this Hyper Voice is doing absolute wonders for Team MYS right there. It's such a, a nice shred of SP defense for uh, Lamac uh, against, you know, Lamac and Kari here. And they're doing really, really well about it. Just, it, it's so interesting to see how MYS plays as one of their rounds, not using a supporter of all, at all. They just want to always adapt that aggressive lifestyle, as you can see. And they're getting rewarded for it, as you can see. Even though the, the initial invade wasn't successful, it did cause distraction. And, and Lamac and Kari is trying to find their correct footing here now unfortunately for them uh akx the miascarada is doing its job well you know just getting those scores in doing what we've seen in the past from both these teams they prioritize that top lane yeah and it looks like just down in bottom path there the reggie ice from the looks of things was ripped very quickly uh and with the secure uh sort of comp that they are playing for mys overheat was able to pick that one up i uh, guarantee that objective and then we were also able to see gyarados rip the top wow. ledger lefty so MYS creating pressure all over the map here, and they're able to take both objectives off the map within that sort yeah, of three like, seconds. Jeez, uh, ladies and gentlemen, blink and you'll miss it. They, uh, as we said, MYS. Uh, I thought they have, yeah, adopted a a team composition to just kind of rip the objectives, you know. So this is work. This is what they're trying to do. They're trying to create pressure, as you said, from all sides, and it's working. And because Hooper Portal is so important, the fact that two of the tier one pads are now down just makes Lamac and Curry's mobility that much weaker. So, uh, MYS is doing really well here. Yes, being able to take away those two team one pads is massive. Obviously, Hooper can use the hyperspace hole to travel from top to bottom path, but when you remove the T1 goal zones, it makes it more of a defensive maneuver as opposed to being able to use it aggressively or for offense. Uh, so, they've got a really good uh, lead here, MYS. Score lead as well, but lots of map pressure being created. Yeah, look, we're, we're complimenting MYS a lot, but we gotta never leave out Lamac and Curry's composition because they are more of a team-based fight. So as it gets closer to the Rayquaza, they would... If you look at the team comp here, you'd think that Lamac and Curry should have the advantage, but we got to see how much uh, ahead will Team YS be in terms of the scoreboard to see if that's going to play uh, any importance here. But you can see a big fight going through Portal in uh, to save the Curry a little bit, but Silvio getting rid of that Mimikyu, Nightmoo Foxy, just really there in the back line. Hyper Voice doing so much. Trevenant and XP, Woodhammer onto the Blastoise. Blastoise surfing away, and Miascarada clone, uh, double team, just really just attaching itself there. Wow, what timing from that Hornleech from Rebox. The That was so perfect. Blastoise just... How would you feel as soon as you pop out? You're just KO'd in two seconds. Yeah, and that, that you can tell Rebox has a lot of experience in that respect as well. Was able to time it in his head, know the, the timers to go, if they're coming back, this is the moment. Preemptively used the Hornleech there and was able to catch the Blastoise out and drag into the rest of their team. Yeah, for, for a team that doesn't necessarily use supports, they are doing phenomenally well. And now they are just trying to 
you know, situate themselves so they're, they're reading each other's minds right now. They can see that uh, Team Lamarck and Kari is trying to go to places where they can't, but you can see at this point in time, Lamarck and Kari finally gets to do an objective first. Now, they may be able to take this Regieleki, which is going to really help them. Uh, Lucario, though, does have Floppy Tail. Yang's applied it, but gets stuck. The Slice Shock, not enough, even with Lucario's Unite, so they anticipated that move. Great job by Lamarck and Kari, and now th they are getting the KOs that they need, but Sylveon goes through. They couldn't go to ahead and score as Reggie Lecky goes for an 8 overcap on the tier 1 pad. Yeah, very smart play there as well. Unfortunate for Lamak and Curry that they weren't able to do anything with the Reggie Lecky once they secured it. Uh, the pad was on 12 points and Reggie Lecky went crashing in before Blastoise could break it there. But uh, MYS once again able to hang back, sent one troop in to see if they could get the secure, uh, but defended really well and picked up a KO or two. Uh, looks like Lamak and Curry have a good opportunity here to fall back, take some of their troops, get some experience from the, the creeps there, uh, and then look to form together and make a push, uh, wow. whether it be top or bottom, to score some points. But looks like the Miascarada as well, they're no, getting he, KO. Yeah, he, deep, he, but... he tried to be really sneaky there, but uh, it's so hard when you play against a professional team. You just have that awareness and insight to guess where you are running and hiding and you're running out of spaces there but saying that though bocce such a brazen move with one minute to ray looking if there's any uh buffs available to try and do and uh now he's just kind of like guarding this area because they yeah, do have is... eyes at the bottom uh very interesting Bla uh, gyarados is there doesn't realize mimiku's around there goes miascarada's unite countered by uh, gyarados's unite as well but miascarada goes down here they do know mimiku is in the field meanwhile blaziken again objectively gets the reggie rock which will be a massive advantage here uh for team mys but you can see mimiku going ahead on yang mimiku's in a lot of trouble bocce finally goes down but he still has time to come back before the rayquaza on top of that so long as hooper is well hidden gets to his position uh lamak and curry can still be in it and it's still quite a close game here yeah it's only a matter of about 70 points at the moment uh mys do bring a level lead into the final stretch here but having said that the hooper with its uh unite move and the ability to reset uh the teammates for heals as well could prove vital in getting an edge of the team fight I mean, I love what MIS is doing here. They're just whittling the raid down. They're forcing Lamarck and Curry to, to bring out their, their guns, force their hands. And you can see that Nightmew Foxy is keeping Ray's health at bay because the thing is, they do have those secures available. But you can see Calamity going in for the attack right now. Horse Portal, there goes the Hoop Unbound. Gets pushed away, though, by Blaziken. And there goes the Gyarados Unite. Dr dr uh, freaking Blastoise Unite as well. Espeon trying to counter it. But Mimikyu gets rid, uh, gets rid of because the damage was just too great from Gyarados. And and just that's the power of mys it's just all offense there was just not enough support on lamak and curry's side to be able to sustain that amount of damage and you can see right then and there trevenant finally the nail on the coffin but calamity goes through could be something but no blaziken secures the ray with an overheat and you can see this is a dangerous situation now for lamak and curry yeah i think it goes to show we, we've seen it a number time number of times from mys the power of patience. We saw a bit earlier before the final stretch, the Gyarados sitting just tightly, watching that T2 goal zone at top, waiting for them to come score, was able to defend, and we see it again in the Rayquaza fight towards the back end. Just poking the Rayquaza, saying to Lamak and Curry, hey guys, this is on you, you need to do something. They waited for the right moment, and as soon as they yeah. saw an opening, they took it uh, without hesitation, and that resulted in them getting the four KOs, and uh, using these Rayquaza shields now to put in a lot of points to extend their lead. Yeah, it was just hard to see what Mimikyu could do there. They just all had answers for Bocce, and Bocce is an excellent player, but I think Mimikyu here just couldn't find the right target or separate MYS. They had each other's backs covered. And just like that Nightmew Foxy, this hyper voice, I'm telling you now, Foxy, it's got to be MVP in some shape or form here because that support fire to allow units like Gyar <coughs> Gyarados and Lucario to kind of push in without being too harmed was devastating for for lamak and curry they just didn't have that healer support you know not the hooper portal one but um it showed because even with the portal mys was they had just perfect timing to pull them out of it or, or push them away from it and uh they were extremely rewarded for that so great win on mys yeah, I'm not sure if they considered it specifically in the draft as well, but we did see that Mimikyu was the first pick uh, for Lamak and Kari, and as a response, 
We had all of these melee units come out as well, just yeah. to overwhelm it. Whether it's Play Rough or Shadow Claw, I think that they knew that Bocce was going to, whether it be the Solar Beam with Mu or the Inteleon, but hey, let me grab Sylveon and Hyper Voice, and they were able to just run it down and create such pressure. Uh, so I'm not really sure what Mac and Curry can do here. Uh, it would be interesting to see their thought process, but I think Nightmare Foxy is a, a player that they need to target and try and uh, put them on the back foot as much as possible with some target advance. Yes, and you know what? I can see now that Lamak and Curry has looked, you know, I don't like that Gyarados, so they've decided to ban it. I mean, they tried to maybe let it slide, and I think they've re you know, it, it's it's hard because we, we do that too sometimes when we think, oh, maybe Gyarados isn't a big problem, but they saw it as a real uh, big threat. So now they've banned it, and they've banned Mimikyu as well. So uh, very interesting here. Uh, what type of gameplay are they looking at? Yeah, no, it is very interesting to see them ban that as well, considering they actually took that last game um, as one of their main picks. But uh, we do see the Leafy on and the Umbion ban coming from MYS. Pretty consistent bans that we've seen throughout the community tournament as well. Um, but as we saw now as well, they let Muse slide. They take that first pick. I think that's just a, a way of them having a third ban, essentially. Uh, so let's see what uh, Lamak and Curry can actually do with the Mew. Yeah, it's very few you can and play Mew as well as a Knight Mew Foxy for sure. Uh, we can see that it looks like Rebongs has taken up the role of Crustle. And now we do know Crustle is such a popular pick in the C region that it's adapted over to EU, NA, and OCE, as well as I India. I think Crustle is one of strong. the most underrated defenders. I think people do know it's strong now, but the ability for it to be able to section enemies off with Rock Tomb, provide that CC with the X Scissor, and I think it's Unite, when used correctly, is one of the strongest Unites in the game. It can provide some pressure for Rip. Uh, it just makes you so tanky as well to do that extra damage if anyone's attacking you. Uh, so it can yeah. be very imposing in a team fight. And you can see that they were thinking with their bands to Umbreon, yeah. which is one of the main counters for that Crustal Unite. It can take it from a powerhouse to nothing in the fight. So with Umbreon out of the picture, Crustle is able to run rampant and yes. um, we see it with an attack weight as well. So interesting to see if they not, will be not just attack through. weight, man. There's double fluffy tail on MYS. Can you yes. see that face? <laughs> <laughs> like this, this team is so sometimes just fun to watch sometimes because they're so unorthodox and there's nothing wrong with Lamarck and Curry's picks at all. You know, they've got the comfy Zorak, so that's going to be a massive nuisance. But you could see. They've got Yimu as the secure. It's got to be Wicked Blow, right? And then you've got y Yang as well. Nightmare yes. Foxy, most likely Hyper Voice again. And then you've got HT to kind of dive around and do the hits. And it's it's just they're dodging and weaving and just securing objectives. That's their game plan. So it's really up to Lamak and Curry here to kind of think, all right, we see Double Fluffy Tail here. I mean, if we, this was us, Avro, right? And we're on Lamak and Curry's team and we see that on the opponents. What are we thinking? Like, what? What is our game plan here? Because we know what they're intending to do. Yeah, look, if, if I say that, I know that I am just going to... 2 minutes 30, 30 seconds before, I'm sitting next to the central area and just trying to catch someone out as they go in for that Rayquaza. Um, if they do, they're a good enough team, obviously, MYS, that if they do have a lead, they can still look to play the fight, even though they've clearly got a, a competition built around the, uh, you know, ripping and securing of the objectives. But you want to be there early, shut them out from that central area, and I think if Zoroark and Comfy are able to get an early lead, you could win the game before Ray even comes on the map. That's so. true. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess in terms of this though, not maybe just the central area, but Fluffy Tail for the top Reggie Alecki, it's all about the timer. And I think with both of these teams, as we go to what may possibly be the final game of the night, uh, they know timers, man. Not just the objectives in terms of the Reggie Alecki and uh, the bottom Reggie, but also uh, the central farm, the, the jungle. They, they've got a down pat. So it's really like a battle of the minds between these two teams. Yes, and look, very interesting as well to see that there is a Urshifu in lane. Um, very rarely yeah. will you see, uh, you know, a Kubfu running around in lane and whatnot, but the Lucario is doing a great job trying to pressure, but it does get taken down by the Squirtle as well. So it looks yeah, like we very can see Lamak and Curry yeah. taking early lead in the top half. 
I mean, this, yeah, this is really good, and, and they've seen this now. They, look at what they've adapted here. They've actually gone four players bottom. They don't want to give any advantage, and you know what? Squirtle taking one down is great, and you can see their rebombs cannot defend, and it's just a dwebble. So this is a great response from Lamac and Curry uh, compared to game one. And uh, the good side, though, is at least Bocci does have a little bit of an experience, but he is still up against three. But as we say that, there goes those Comfe and Zoro going through yang's in a lot of trouble gets taken down here comes uh more trouble on the horizon ht trying to not to give away those buffs but you cannot escape the power of Comfe zorak how hard is it to avoid that situation and all of a sudden the tables have turned avro yimu stuck at level four kubfu yeah and this is what they needed to do right they needed to get an early level lead and just snowball and i dare say we could see them get a triple Ooh. ko here if played correctly however they do Ooh. get with the pursuit, does enough to be able to take down the both the Zoroark and the Comfy, and that will put them on the back foot a little bit now. Yeah, and you know that that's how they knew each other were playing, you know? They knew that the time was right to strike to, you know, for, for Lamak and Curry, we're going to go invade their central, and MYS is, no, 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 we do that move all the time. We know what you're going for. So this was a great response, but uh, down goes Lucario yet again. At this point, Yang is just fodder for for, for Zorak and uh, Comfey, and I think, you're yeah, this... Like you said, if this Zorak is able to spike early, then they will be able to hold that line to prevent MYS from getting scary. Yeah, exactly right. The one way to be able to beat the rip comp is to KO them all before they have a chance to rip, right? <laughs> so we see here the Zorak's already level eight and a That's half. Cool. Looks like it's coming up top to help defend here. Yeah, and look, what I like about this right now that I think MYS knows they can't win in a 5v5 situation, so they're just really trying to run rampant uh, upon, you know, they're just running back and forth, right? Trying to really take uh, a side here, but the Mac and Curry is just on it. They are trying to really give that back, and you can see the KOs being traded here, and uh, Zorak really being n just a nuisance and not just trying to to go against enemies but taking away their farm as well and, and it's such a high mobility match here for, for for both teams they're just running after each other just trying to take each other's farm yes and there's lots of emphasis being put on this top path as well i know that um the reggie bot is normally oh, what's prioritizing oh. the oc region and zorro gets out with just one oh, hp there no way oh no that so Yimu, that, that's the funniest run i've ever seen from an earth shifu there but my god, that is just a lucky break if we ever saw one. And now Zorak gets rewarded for it. He gets to do more damage. He does go down to the bottom, but the MYFC... scariest thing about that, that combination with the, the Comfy and the Zorak is they get out on one HP, you blink, and they're back to full because the Comfy yeah. is just healing and healing and healing. Oh, that was a fantastic fluffy tail there from oh, probably both caught... Russell and Lucario. They managed to get the objective and get both the Zorak down. So that's huge catch-up experience. We've talked about this before, but Nightmoo Foxy on that Sylveon is such a massive supporter for MYS. And, and this is a team that doesn't have a support. Yeah, the way they play is just uh, amazing to be able to do so well without sort of any healing on the map. Um, no support characters, so... Look, the Zoroark this... definitely has the opportunity to burst them down and get a, a few early KOs, um, you know, when team fights do break out to put them on the back foot, but they are going to have to play it correctly because there is so much burst damage with the comp that uh, MYS is playing at the moment as well with that. Yeah, look, I, I really applaud the effort that Lamarck and Kari are doing right now, but we're going to see Sylveon do a 40 dunk at the bottom, putting them ahead. Uh, it, it looks like the level is, is pretty neck and neck. You know, they tried to halt the leveling system there. There goes the Unite from the Crustle. Uh, Lucario getting rid of that Blastoise very, very quickly. And then, oh my gosh, another one from Absol getting rid of the Trevenant. And now they're on the hunt. Ajalion trying to get out of there. Goes for a nice Hyper Beam. There's the passive, but blocked by Yang. There goes the Mirage as well. Muse trying to find a way to get rid of that Absol, but to no available. Has to back out. MYS protect their forces with each other, just sacrificing each other's HP and getting rewarded for it. Another Fluffy Tail, and how quick is that Regilecki being done from Fluffy Tail? Yeah, it's just so much damage. The Fluffy Tail definitely assisted as well, and we see here now they get the Regilecki in. They're not necessarily trying to put it in. The, the, the crustals there showing face, creating a bit of pressure. But we do see them all slowly migrating down to the bottom path here. And they're going to look to push and score in that T1 goal zone. 
Yeah, and you can see the intentions. We can see Ja Leon, you know, such a fantastic Mew right now. Just really trying to hold the fort for his team. But it, the numbers just get overwhelming. And, and as you said, Krussell showing face, just trying to be that little nuisance. And even though Lamak and Kari most likely knows that they were rotating, it just wasn't enough time and as you can see another fluffy tail like this is i guess i don't i hope this is not a meta avro but if it is i'm, I'm still kind of all for it like just they have two fluffy tails one for each objective if they don't have it and uh it's looking to really pay dividends but there goes the counter attack mys may have stepped a little bit too uh stayed there for too long urshifu and a lot of trouble going in for or managing to maybe get out there yimu very very close but trevenant's not having any of it blastoise gets rid of the urshifu Nightmare Foxy does have the comfort on hand, but maybe in a little bit of trouble. Lucario trying to pick off anyone here as Bocchi maybe gets a KO on Nightmare Foxy, and which they oh. do not double Comfy. Something just happened there, and I swear Comfy just took one for the team by detaching off the Sylveon. Yeah, that's yeah. So the, the Comfy's on the the enemy team from the Sylveon as well. So it looks like the Comfy there was uh, looking to jump off and potentially. A press to try and secure that KO on the Sylveon, but Hyper Voice was too strong there. I was able to get a bit of distance, activate the Hyper Voice, and we saw both the Blastoise and the Comfy uh, go down. That, yeah, that was, look, whatever that was, that was so quick, but it's not over. I love that Lamarck and Kari is neck and neck for the score right now. It's so close. The levels difference is not too far behind, but we got to beware here. MYS has double Fluffy Tail. Now, they are positioning themselves for the Reggie Aleki. They may be using the first one here. We're not yet sure. They're pushing forward on it. They already, uh, they may apply this. We're going to have to wait and see. But they are pumping it down. Reggie Aleki, four Fluffy members of MYS here, there. Actually. Four members on the top. You just can't beat the, you can't beat that. The Fluffy Tail uh, straight away because you have to kind of anticipate it, right? And, and, and then go against their burst. But now with Reggie Aleki pushing in as aggressor, look at the rest of MYS. Yes, at the central ray. They're ready this for is, it. This is where Lamak and Curry have to just go, it doesn't matter, you don't have your night move, the Regilecki, nothing we need to get to the ray pit here. We see the, the hyper voice just screaming at that Oh, ray they're going for it so quick right it's now. It's going to be really quickly, quickly done. Oh, Lucario, the quickest rip you ever saw. This was going to be anything insane, but no, HT managing to do a score there. The fluffy tail meta. Avro, I think we need to go into a ranked game and do double Fluffy Tail, man, because this was so quick. I'm putting Fluffy Tail on every Pokemon that I have now. <laughs> <laughs> but that, that just goes to show as well um, the extra sort of advantage a team has when you go 1-0 up uh, in a best of three, it gives you the power to be creative and to do something a little bit out of the ordinary. And uh, the conversation there with MYS, very confident in their ability, but they probably just said, guys, Grab your fluffy tail, let's rip the ray and see what happens. And they've managed to come out on top here. And I don't think there's going to be enough time to make that push. They are 300 points behind Lamak and Curry. Having said that, they do have time to rally a push, but we see this cheeky crustal looking to score another 22 points uh, in the second He, he knew the there. exact amount, Avro. He wanted 550 exact. That's all he wanted. Yeah, but exactly we right. do see another push going through here. Great catch by Mew. So there is st still a chance. They just need to stay there. There's five members of the Mac and Curry on the top. You can see the solar beam being put on the crustal, but that hyper voice is doing so much damage. Tremendous has to eject away. Oshifu has come back in with the wicked blow. Yimu just trying to be scary there. There goes Tremendous once more, but gets ripped to shreds by the uh, Urshifu. You can see that Blastoise spinning around there right now, but Mew getting KO'd by the Lucario as well. Blastoise, the left to stand, is the one trying to push out all sorts of waterworks, but to no avail, there goes Zora uh, Zorak as well, and that is it, guys. That, for the second week running, Team MYS has just showed the region that they are definitely not of ring rust they are so formidable and their plays are so unorthodox one of the very few teams to not use supports and make it work yeah very very exciting gameplay there guys and look lamak and curry put up a, a very good fight making it all the way through the finals but mys just proved they're too strong at the moment uh, they seem to have they're so in sync they've got everything down pat uh, even when they are being a bit weird and wonderful with the fluffy tails and looking to play a rip comp, it still just looks so smooth from their side. So congratulations to MYS 
on taking out the tournament um, with only dropping the one game throughout the, the whole tournament, I believe.